Bob Schindelbeck, who's longtime extension associate at Cornell, um, has been promoting these ideas for a long time before they were hot and sexy. Um, he's also the director of the Cornell Soil Health Lab. So with that, I'll let him kick it, kick it off. You're muted. Thank you. <laughs> okay, here we go. Sorry, I wanted to congratulate you all for being selected for the Soil Health Specialist Training. It's, it, it will always serve you well in the agricultural community that you work in, uh, whatever it might be. Uh, these principles bring together so many of the ecological functionings of soil and society really with the new ideas that come along, uh, the new trends in ag, um, we heard people asking Genesis about uh, inoculants for the soil. Uh, these things are going to be, you know, borne out through science, through testing, through experience. And by having this background, you'll be able to kind of put that all in a context. So when you hear something, you can say, well, that, that, sounds, that sounds plausible. Let me, let me give it a little more thought and you'll kind of know which direction to go. So you'll, you'll never regret this. And I'm so happy to be part of it because uh, it's really our goal. It's been our goal. Uh, um, I started working with Dave Wolf, uh, you know, tw almost 20 years ago on the soil health stuff. And it was, it's always been just so interesting to us and so useful uh, in all our dealings with all things ag. So uh, just congratulations. And I'm going to introduce now uh, this hands-on exercise. It isn't so hands-on this year. Um, this hands-on exercise for the soil health management planning. And so uh, what this involves really is uh, this exercise involves using a soil health report to kind of help a grower, I, I have a picture on the left here of a grower standing there with holding his soil health report. As Kirsten said, it's a 10 page report, it's a mini manual of information. And he wants to, of course, address his soil management, you know, what, what I need to do. He's got lots of questions, lot, lots of ideas, out, there's lots of ideas out there in the world. But what's he gonna do? And so we're gonna say, well, you need to understand your soil processes and your indicators here. Look at this, here's 10 pages worth of information for you to decipher to figure out what to do. Well. As soil health specialists, you'll be able to step in right away and assist with this. And as more and more people start to learn, learn these, these things and the, these ideas get uh, more and more um, picked up by our culture, uh, the specialists will be less important and growers will be able to do this themselves. But right now we're, at, we're still at that cutting edge uh, where you're gonna have to be that liaison to really assist growers um, as, as we've seen so many, so many people do so well. So it's, and again, it's the, the report uh, and, and this management planning, it's, it's really about, uh, you see the farmer standing on this foundation of soil processes and the soil testing indicators. So we, we're kind of getting a report on how's my soil doing? What's my, what's my health like? My personal health, how's that doing? Uh, wh where do I need help? Uh, and then what might I do about it? And so we, we're gonna go through these four steps here on the left on a couple different ways. Uh, I've got about a dozen, dozen slides to introduce us to the, to the breakout sessions uh, but this is what we'll be doing in the breakout session, what I'm about to go through now. Uh, so I'll give an example of that. Just, just the, kind of the strategies for thinking. Uh, it's nothing you haven't seen before. I'll use the NRCS to, to back me up on that because they use the same sort of idea, same sort of ideas. Uh, but we're really looking at those processes, so processes and how they affect management and how management's affected by them. Uh, what processes are out of range, what we call constraints. Kirsten mentioned that. And then what might I do about it? Short term and long term. Kirsten introduced that idea, the management strategies. And then ultimately, of course, we need to monitor this and see if it's working or not. Okay, so on the right here, uh, well, I should say on the left, we've got the, our soil health assessment. This is actually group one um, of, our, of our, the, uh, the management planning um, process that will go in through late, go through later. Um, so you notice on this soil health report, we've got some information, the field details and the grower background at the top, kind of tells us who the grower is, uh, what they're after, are they organic, do they have a big family, do they have a lot of equipment, are they uh, land poor, land rich, what have you, uh, which is so important to helping someone, you need to know who they are. And then below that, of course, we have the, this is the front page of that soil health report, the first page, are these soil performance targets to address what they're called. And so we, you know, we, all these different features of the soil um, activity uh, are tested. Uh, the values obtained from each of those tests is listed in the column called value. And the next set is that colored rating. Of course, we always say that anything in, the, in this red zone um, is a constraint to function. So this is actually, we use a database, big database, 8,000 samples now. 
Um, and we use that uh, information to kind of to rate and score this these this information. So it, we'll take take the first one here: surface hardness. We notice it's at 248 psi, and that's a rating of 16. That means it's in the 16th percentile of our whole database. So that means 84% of the soil health samples that we've that we tested are above it. So that's that's a constraint. That's something we really want to work on. Uh, something that should draw our attention. And of course, the, anything that is highlighted in red also gets these constraints. What function? What 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 isn't the soil doing well? So those are things that we're, we want to target. And we we see it's rooting and water transmission. Probably the grower notices this uh, that his roots aren't as developed as they should be. The water's kind of ponding at the surface, what have you. And anyways, we're going to put all this information together to help the grower get from uh, his his background and this information towards the soil health management plan. A couple things to keep in mind though, uh, and this is just a kind of a, a, an aside, but these, these are important points that the Kirsten mentioned too, this report, it's a management guide. So it's a bunch of ideas to get you started. Uh, and what you're going to do has, it depends on you. So we, we could say, oh, you just add manure, add manure to your field, that will help you. And how could it not in a funny way, would re really adding manure to a field not help it in, in some way or another. Um, but again, that's, that's not our objective. We wanna be precise and focused and directed and say, you know, we're using this information to say that this, this would work well for you, but since you don't have access to that, how can we get that another way? So in other words, that's, that's number two, different management strategies can mitigate the same problem. One person's approach might be very different than another's, but if it works for them, great, then that's the whole idea. Also a single management practice that you might apply could address several of these factors. If you were at soil hardness and uh, soil protein, could, could one thing be done to address both of those? Well, we'll, we'll see. The, the answer is yes, of course, uh, or no, it could be, again, depends on the person. And where do you get, where do you know what to do? Well, this is where you come in as, as professionals in, in the field and being trained as specialists, you're, you're going to workshops, you, you've got field days, you attend wheel field days, you put them on, you hear of things, local experience, you see farmers that are successful growing a cover crop late in the season or, or, or fitting it in somewhere early in the season. And you share this, and this is how we all grow as a culture and you grow in, in importance and value uh, to your field. So, um, the, and, and again, the whole idea is what, this is all inf just information, but how do you get it to work for you, for this grower? And at the bottom, soil health changes slowly over time. Although think, as Dave was showing, things happen quickly. And if you're watching, if you're just looking at soil health reports, the, the, the mean numbers don't change so much sometimes, but um, farmers can really see the difference in the field. And this is that substantiates these numbers that seem rather subtle changes. The farmer says, oh boy, that's a, that's a big deal. Right, and here's the, uh, Joseph and M Emsley uh, emailed this. It was an oversight. We didn't send these out before. Kirsten had this table uh, shown before. Uh, this is the suggestions management <laughs> management suggestions table. Uh, that this is page nine of the last page of, of each uh, soil health report, and it where it highlights. Remember, we said the soil health surface was high, and the subsurface was high, and the protein was low. These are highlighted on page nine from the information on page one, and it kind of gives you some ideas, some starting points for short and long term management. And again, it's just a starting point, but it's things that kind of get you thinking in a direction. There are conversation points with the grower. You mention these things, they say, oh, I'd like to do that, or I'm not going to do that. I'm not getting rid of the plow. The plow stays. Grandpa always plowed. I'm going to use it. Whatever. Um, but you just, you need to know that, um, that you've got to, got to marry these ideas with the grower, these ideas and more with, with the grower's intentions. We actually have a six step program <laughs> set up for this uh, management suggestions uh, uh, table to kind of tie it in with the soil health report of page one. So we, we mentioned before, we want to find out who the grower is. And, and we'll, by the way, we'll do this. Each of the groups will be filling out a table like this, uh, the, six, the six ideas here, uh, and then reporting that back to the, the big group uh, at the end uh, around three o'clock. But first of all, you know, we're looking at the grower strengths and the farm background. Who is the grower? Uh, what are they after? Um, and that's, of course, the NRCS does the same thing over here with grower goals. And then we talk about, well, uh, what are the constraints? Uh, explain the constraints, like what's going on with that field? Uh, what's the what's really bothering this person? Is that soil hardness? Have they noticed that? Are they they're surprised by it? All that comes into play here. Uh, where you evaluate these different results and say hey, he's really interested or she's really interested in doing something about this. 
And then what might you do? Of course, you start with this management suggestions table, but they've got ideas too. They've seen the neighbor use some cover crop with great success. It's flourishing on this field. They say, I want to do some of that. Can that would that help me? So this, this is where it goes in the options. And that, that kind of plays into in farm resources with the other first two as well. Um, and of course, the soil health status is the, uh, the soil health report itself. So for the NRCS to come up with the management plan, it's kind of these first, first four processes here. Um, same same sort of idea, these first four steps. Of course, the, the plan itself is in the middle here. That's the overlap of everything. We could put an equal sign here for, from the first four to five. What is the plan? And this is what we re really want to relate in 45 minutes of meeting together. Uh, for our group, uh, what have we come up with as a plan for this person based on the information we have? And of course, there's always this feedback, uh, step six. It's always where you try it and it feeds back. And you say the grower says, oh, this is, a, this is a pain in the neck. Isn't there an easier way? Or I use too much, I'm mean, use too much seed, or I should have used more of the radish seed in there. I should have planted earlier. These are things just, just part of the lowing, learning and growing process. And of course, the NRCS, there's that's what they call phase one, phase two, and phase three in their uh, conservation planning process. It's just, it's the same idea. Uh, we use a slightly different format. But of course, it's it's a winner. It's this this is the way to do it. You break out the problem, you lay it out into these pieces, and uh, you just kind of address address the problem, and, and you become useful and helpful uh, to to the grower or persons you're assisting. And an important thing to keep in mind: we kind of know what works, and this is uh, when we suggest management plans. Well, what, what might you do? We kind of already, or even before this training, you kind of have an idea that of some of the main players that things that kind of promote soil health and things that reduce soil health. And growers know this too, but there's there's always issues. It, it's wet. We say don't traffic wet soils, but the, <laughs> it's not getting any drier. I've got to get my corn now, snow's coming. W what do you do? You go out and you make a mess. You can't help it. So then you, but at least you know, you've taken money from your bank account on soil health and in the red, you've moved in the red direction. So now you got to remember, I got to do something to address that compaction that I caused last year. Um, because I, I did, I couldn't help it. I didn't try to do it. I don't want to do it, but what can I, what can I do? Uh, so this is kind of just a, just a balance, just balance idea. Um, some people use a checkbook idea or a teeter-totter. Just, you always want to keep trying to promote the green things and minimize the red things, but you want to be aware of both. And of course, we, we, we have, I really like this, the soil health management toolbox. There's only so much you can do and this helps. Uh, so all the things that you might do for soil management really fall in these four basic categories. You think, oh God, you do a billion different things, but they're all either one of these or some combination thereof. Uh, so it just helps to, to realize that there's, there's only so much you can do and of all the million things you might do. But if you can organize it like this, it, it sometimes helps. And I like it. It's that simple, but that complicated, or it's that complicated, but that simple. So the options are numerous and endless. Um, and so it's putting that together. And so it takes a, uh, a certain kind of uh, just desire to uh, come up with a plan and stop there and realize this is just the plan for now. Uh, we can always revisit it later, but we, we need to get this done. So here's where we'll eat. We're going to break into groups. Uh, Joseph's already broken us into groups. There's five, five rooms. And we each get a farm scenario with the associated soil health report. They're going to brainstorm and work together in our little group of five or six. And then later we'll get together and, and give our presentation to the group. And this is the, the different rooms. I'll move this. The different rooms. Uh, the, you, you don't have to worry about this. You will automatically be assigned to a room. I've got room four, the pasture hayfield. Room one was Kirsten Kurtz. Joseph Emsley is room two. Aaron Ristow is room three. Stephanie is room five. Uh, real quick, I'm going to go through these real fast. I just want to use one, one minute per, not even. Um, so this is group one. Uh, this is a conventional cash grain. These are the details. Uh, there's a lot of clues in here. It's kind of it's supposed to be kind of fun. This is this is real. It's 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 made up. But the idea is just just to get some ideas. Here's kind of the background of the, of the field and the farmer. And then here's the opportunities and challenges. This is the first couple parts of the um, of our six step process here. You can fit, fit this in. Uh, there's, okay, there's other dairy farms around. There's an equipment dealer nearby. Just these little things that'll help you brainstorm in a group and come up with a plan for this this grower with this field. And this background, how is he going to address these issue, issues? What he, might he do to address these issues that the soil health report has turned up on his field? Cash grain two, different different grower, 
So this it's not a recipe. We can't say, oh, for cash, oh, conventional cash grain. Oh, we don't. Yeah, you need to do this, this, and this. Well, this, look, this this person's got completely different issues uh, on his field or her field, um, and it's we need to take that into account. And how are we going? What what might we do to address these issues one by one or together? Um, so it's it's just a uh, just a fun thing. Should be a fun exercise. Conventional dairy. We were saying this is up near Niagara Falls, New York. It's been in corn silage for five years. You're starting to get ideas already. Um, there's some opportunities. He's got a young grower. Didn't someone come back? Oh yeah, the, a, a nephew has come back from college, so he wants to move in the modern move into the modern world with this older farm, older growers. What what might you suggest? What what might you come up with for this grower uh, in this in this field situation? Pastor Hayfield, this is my group. Uh, this field idea is called rolling acres, uh, but a, a, a organic dairy, organic hay and dairy production. Um, they're, they're increasing. They've got a, this is a long sloping field with a pond at the bottom where he's getting el algal blooms. We see he's got high phosphorus in the soil. What might we do? There's diverse equipment available on the farm and the young grower, one young grower has come back or a brother, I forget what it says now. But they want to get some cover crop in there to improve, improve their pasture. So let's see what we come up with. And the organic vegetables is the last one. This is Stephanie. So this one's set in Western Pennsylvania. Uh, they've got a whole bunch of cultivation equipment um, for the organic vegetable. Uh, look at this one. Here's a hint. Grower has no experience with cover crops. Interesting. So how are you going to help break this person based on what they have here and what you know, what you're learning? What might you say to this grower to get them going maybe in the direction of cover crops. Uh, but again, they have no experience, so you're gonna have to hold them by the hand and get them started with it. So this is the sort of thing you're up against. Here's that six step process once again, uh, just kind of what you're, what you're to do for these six steps. The, the leader of, your, of each group will take notes on, these, on what's discussed and uh, on, on a blank sheet. And this is what we presented um, at, at before, just before three o'clock as our, um, um, sign off to say um, good luck. And here's here's the end of the soil health management planning. So right. I'll go with that.